Hi, I'm Dr. Rich Sherman. I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes or so telling you how effective biofeedback is for the treatment of migraine and tension headaches. Migraine and tension headaches are effectively treated using muscle tension and finger temperature biofeedback as long as they did not begin with traumatic events. Large long-term follow-up studies show that muscle tension and temperature biofeedback are highly effective in preventing onset of migraine and tension headaches, including pain from jaw area muscles. Again, as long as they did not begin with traumatic events. The treatments are effective for at least 80% of those people who learn the skills and practice them. Headache activity is usually reduced from between 80% to entirely gone among those for whom the treatment works. Adults and children who have diagnosed migraine and or tension headaches which did not begin with a traumatic event should consider muscle tension and temperature biofeedback. The treatment is likely to require about 10 weekly sessions along with home practice. Menstruation related headaches can be effectively treated with biofeedback. Other types of headaches are not likely to be effectively treated with biofeedback. You need to know something about the physical responses resulting in most tension and migraine headaches of non-traumatic origin so you can see how biofeedback fits in as a way to rectify these problems. These physiological responses include tensing muscles inappropriately for longer than necessary and changing blood flow patterns so that the fingers and toes are too cool while too much blood flows through the central cerebral arteries. The physiological problems resulting in migraine and tension headaches can be initiated by poor posture, anxiety, stress responses, breathing incorrectly, and many other problems. Headaches which seem to be tension and migraine types may be caused by other problems such as trigger points which are not treated with biofeedback. So headache assessments need to include a search for many different initiating problems. Muscle tension headaches are usually caused by incorrect patterns of muscle tension due to people with muscle related pain not being able to tell how tense their painful muscles are as accurately as people with non-painful muscles, habitually keeping muscles too tense for too long, frequently because they don't know the muscles are tense, poor posture while working, especially forward head thrust in which the ears are forward of the shoulders, jaw area muscle pain due to poor tensing habits and in response to pain from other areas such as the jaw joint, tensing head area muscles in response to stress and anxiety. Migraine headaches. The factors initiating migraine headaches are not well understood nor agreed upon by researchers and clinicians. We do know that pre-migraine headache changes in blood flow patterns result in less blood flow to the fingers, toes, and nose, while the central cerebral arteries deep in the brain carry more blood flow than needed. Virtually all the heat emanating from the fingers and toes is caused by near-surface blood flow. Thus, the fingers and toes cool off before a migraine headache begins. If fingertip temperature is raised by increasing blood flow, a well-known reflex is initiated which causes blood flow in the central cerebral arteries to decrease. This prevents the migraine from starting. I'm going to take the next few minutes to tell you what biofeedback actually is, then go on to describe 
how we incorporate it into headache treatments. This is a typical biofeedback device. It has sockets on the front for sensor lines to come in. For example, this is a sensor that picks up skin temperature. The signal has to go out and it goes to a computer. So there's a typical biofeedback display on the computer. It's picking up temperature. If I warm up the sensor, you can see the response on the computer. People learn from the display what their skin temperature is and how to control it. Biofeedback is a teaching technique. This child's fingertip temperature is being recorded. You can see the little sensor taped onto her finger. She's watching the screen to relate changes in sensations from her finger to changes in hand temperature, which correlates with near surface blood flow. She's being coached to make changes in a direction which will increase blood flow. Biofeedback helps people recognize how a physiological system such as blood pressure or temperature is functioning and learn to form a habit of controlling the system so it works optimally for any particular conditions. I'm wearing a sensor that picks up muscle tension from my entire head especially the forehead and the jaws. So when I wrinkle my forehead you'll see the signal go up. So here we go. So there's my forehead wrinkling. And when I tense my jaws, there it goes again. So again, this is picking up muscle tension from my entire head. Biofeedback for migraine headaches. As I just said, pre-migraine headache changes in blood flow patterns result in less blood flow to the fingers, toes, and nose. Since virtually all the heat emanating from the fingers and toes is due to heat in blood flowing just under the surface, a decrease in near surface blood flow results in cooling of the fingers and toes. That means that fingertip temperature is a very easy way to record near surface blood flow. Biofeedback of fingertip temperature is used to teach people to raise their fingertip temperatures to set off a well-known reflex causing blood flow in the central cerebral arteries to decrease. This prevents the migraine from starting. Once a migraine begins, biofeedback rarely helps stop the headache. Your feedback displays include a timeline which changes vertically as temperature changes, up for warmer and down for cooler. The line goes from left to right across the screen at a fairly sedate pace so that the client can get a good view of changes over time. A light bulb which brightens as temperature goes up and dims as it goes down. A sunrise in which the sun rises and brightens with warmth and sinks and dims with cooling. Flowers which bloom with warmth and close with cooling. Clients choose the display they like best during any phase of training. The most useful display may change from time to time. They need to learn rapid control of several degrees in both directions before the therapist and client can be sure that true control has been mastered. The physiological problems causing headaches are frequently initiated by physiological responses 
to stressful situations and anxiety. Biofeedback-based interventions for helping people reduce their physiological responses to stressful situations and anxiety include breathing control training and heart rate variability training. I'll describe these techniques on the next few slides. Here's a typical respiration sensor. It wraps around the chest with a Velcro band, and as you breathe in and out, this little elastic part stretches and contracts. We use this to show people respiration patterns as they're breathing, so they can learn to control it. And notice that I've also got an audio signal going on, so people can listen as well as look at the display. Learning to control breathing patterns to run and think better as well as be less anxious. The belts around the chest and abdomen respond to inhalation and exhalation. Up to half the people with anxiety disorders actually have a breathing disorder. When the breathing disorder is corrected using respiration biofeedback, the anxiety goes away with no further intervention. Heart rate variability. The variability in our heart rates is closely related to stress responses. The heart doesn't beat steadily. Rather, its rate changes all the time. It speeds up with exercise, excitement, and stress. It slows with relaxation and sleep. Your heart rate also changes as you breathe in and out. If your heartbeat rate doesn't change when you breathe in and out, it's likely that you're very sick. The lack of heart rate variability is closely associated with future severe illness. If people with poor heart rate variability are trained to increase it by watching variability on a computer monitor, stress-related changes initiating headaches can be reduced or eliminated. Here's an example of heart rate variability biofeedback being given actually to me. At the top is respiration. You can see me breathing in and out. And at the bottom is heart rate. So that's not um, just beats. That's how fast my heart is beating from beat to beat. Heart rate and inspiration should increase approximately together. And as you can see, just initially they don't. <clears throat> but as soon as I start being able to really attend to uh, the feedback instead of whether I've hooked myself up correctly, you can see they begin to come into alignment. This is the M-Wave heart rate variability biofeedback device. It uses photoplethysmographic sensors on the front of the device or in the ear clip to pick up the heartbeat. The software analyzes the beat-to-beat -beat interval and feeds it back using the lights and bar at the top of the unit. No computer is needed to use this device. The display is incredibly easy to understand. Just keep the upper right light green and you have it. The rest of the display guides you towards achieving this goal. Other interventions which may be needed to control tension and migraine headaches include physical therapy to help patients correct complex postural problems such as forward head thrust when the patient cannot learn to correct the problem through awareness. Cognitive restructuring, which is usually provided by a psychologist. 
may be necessary when patients magnify the actual impact of relatively minor stresses so their physical reactions to the stressors continue despite the patient being aware of the response. Trigger point desensitization, which is usually provided by a physical therapist, for patients having head area pain referred from sensitized areas of the head and neck. Muscle tension awareness and control training exercises such as Jacobson's to assist patients in recognizing and controlling blood flow and muscle tension patterns in their normal environments. These exercises are nearly always part of the treatment and are provided as home practice between sessions. Just how strong is the evidence supporting the use of biofeedback for migraine and tension headache? As I said at the start of this chat, large long-term follow-up studies show that muscle tension and temperature biofeedback are highly effective in preventing onset of migraine and tension headaches. Biofeedback treatments for these problems are not considered experimental and are accepted by many national medical organizations. These are assertions are supported by the reviews listed on the next slide and many others as well. For those wanting considerable detail on the supporting evidence, I've provided summaries and citations from many of the reviews and research studies supporting this assertion on slides following the end of this talk. So, if you want to see this material, just keep viewing slides after I say goodbye a few slides from now. Here are five relatively recent reviews which support the assertion that biofeedback is effective for migraine and tension headaches. For more detail, what type of therapist can treat headaches effectively? Headaches are complex clinical problems which should be treated only by properly trained clinicians. Headache assessment and treatment should only be performed by clinicians with appropriate biofeedback training and state licenses or certifications which include both headache and biofeedback in their practice guidelines. Headache patients should not be treated by typically trained coaches, educators, and etc. as these professionals don't have the appropriate training to recognize rare but deadly problems causing headaches, perform an adequate assessment of what's causing the headache, to avoid giving the wrong or an ineffective treatment, and they can't recognize potentially serious problems which can arise during treatment. Headache patients can be treated by physicians, nurses, psychologists, master's level psychological therapists, physical therapists, and perhaps a few other professions with actual clinical training as well as specialized training in biofeedback. How do you find a therapist likely to be competent to provide biofeedback-based interventions for headaches? First, identify a therapist with proper biofeedback training. The simplest way to be sure that a provider has at least minimal qualifications, training, and experience in biofeedback is to choose someone who's certified in general biofeedback by the Biofeedback Certification International Alliance. You're not looking for people only certified in neurofeedback or pelvic floor biofeedback. Second, check the therapist's credentials to be sure she or he has proper state-issued clinical credentials for assessment and treatment of headaches. This is likely to be a licensed psychologist, physician, or etc. If you're interested in finding a certified biofeedback provider or interested in becoming certified in biofeedback, look on BCIA's website, www.bcia.org. Do you want to learn how to provide biofeedback-based interventions? The Behavioral Medicine Research and Training Foundation 
gives fantastic distance-based home education courses in biofeedback, neurofeedback, pain, pelvic floor disorders, and many others to professionals who want to learn more about biofeedback and other behavioral techniques. If you're a clinician, coach, or educator, we can teach you how to integrate biofeedback into your practice. Interested? Please go to www.biofeedbacktraining.org to see a list of our courses and find out more about biofeedback training. The Association for Applied Psychophysiology and Biofeedback is the field's main professional organization. You can find information about many uses of biofeedback on their website, aapb.org. This is the end of your introduction to treatment of migraine and tension headaches with biofeedback. Thanks very much for attending. Goodbye for now.